welcome to another episode of the Cozy Moth Knits Podcast. My name is Caitlin. On this channel, I talk about knitting. I did um, what I was reading for a while and that kind of fell off. Um, and now I'm kind of like back into knitting again. <laughs> um, but yeah, here we are. Uh, I think it's been, I think I posted last in September where I kind of like... Uh, trauma dumped on you guys like what was going on in my life and then I cried um, I'm not gonna cry today I promise I finally straightened up the space it's not perfect um, I don't think the space will ever be perfect It's way too small for it to be like absolutely perfect um, but yeah it's a little bit better than it was uh, yesterday it's definitely better than it was yesterday uh, we'll just get into the uh, the yarny content. Before we get into today's podcast, I wanted to take a moment to thank our sponsor for today's video, Anna Luisa. Blue, do you have anything to say? Okay. <laughs> I always get so excited when Anna Luisa reaches out to me asking if I want to um, showcase some of their products in one of my videos, and I always say yes wholeheartedly. Um, I've always been a fan of Anna Luisa products. Um, there were some YouTubers I followed that, or who were sponsored by Anna Luisa, and I was immediately hooked hooked onto their product. I thought they were so beautiful. Like, how can I get my hands on those? And for over a year, I have worn Anna Luisa pieces literally every day. <laughs> I'm not exaggerating when I say I wear Anna Luisa jewelry every day. My um, entire jewelry box, the majority, 90% of my jewelry box is Anna Luisa products. Let me tell you a little bit about Anna Luisa. Um, Anna Luisa is based out of New York. Uh, they uh, make high quality pieces at very affordable prices and they're always having sales. So if you sign up for their mail list, like there's constantly sales going on, so always, you know, keep an eye on that. Um, they are also carbon and water neutral um, in their products and in their packaging. Like, I love their packaging. They come in these little, little, uh, little um, canvas envelopes and different colors. Like, they're just, they're so cool. Um, and, 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 and all their pieces are unique and um, just, you know, like you, you'll never find, they're like snowflakes. You'll never find one just like the other. Uh, but let me show you the pieces that Anna Luisa sent to me so that I could show you. Um, the first being this necklace. It's just a dainty little chain. Um, I've been looking for a chain for a really long time. I have um, pendant necklaces um, that you've probably seen me wear in my past videos, but I was looking for just a simple chain. And this is their Leo chain in the short length. Um, I love it. <laughs> I've worn it every day since they sent it to me. And they sent me their Lisa bracelet, which again is just a simple little gold chain um, with a sweet little um, heart on the tassel. Um, but yeah, this is another, like, I, I avoided wearing, um, bracelets for a while because I felt like it would be too much, but a little something like this is just perfect. Um, it goes with practically anything, whether I'm trying to, uh, dress a little bit more feminine or a little bit more masculine. Um, you can never go wrong with a gold bracelet. Um, they also sent me another bracelet, which is absolutely beautiful. I just couldn't put it on because, um, I don't have my husband to help me. This is the Michael bracelet. Um, it's a thicker chain, um, if I go like this and you can see, you know, again, just a neutral piece, but yet a little bold to make a statement, you know, um, it is just absolutely beautiful, a thicker gold chain. I'm obsessed with gold jewelry. It's the only jewelry I wear besides my, <laughs> my wedding band and engagement ring. Lastly, I have this absolutely gorgeous, um, pendant ring or a statement ring, I guess we want to call it, um, that I was immediately drawn to when I saw it. And this is the Amara ring in black. And it has this beautiful little, um, little star right there in the middle of it. I guess this black background and oh, it's gorgeous. <laughs> I, I'm obsessed with it. When I wear it, I, you know, I'm always looking at it. Like, 
Oh, it's so pretty. So now that I'm done, you know, hyping up Ana Luisa, <laughs> um, I wanted to tell you that I have coupon code with them. If you use my coupon code, the Cozy Moth Knits 20, um, at checkout, you'll receive 20% off. Um, and use my affiliate link down below so that uh, and it'll direct you straight to Anna Luisa's website and it will apply that coupon code for you. And again, that's Cozy Moth Knits, 20 for 20% 20 off uh, your first purchase at Anna Luisa. Um, you are going to love them as much as I love them. <laughs> and I highly, highly recommend you just checking them out. All right, so enough of me uh, gushing over Anna Luisa and uh, back to the video. Last video, I was almost done the half and half triangles wrap for my friend, which was supposed to be a graduation gift for her, graduation slash birthday gift for her, cause like her birthday and, and her graduation fell around the same week. Um, I finished it and I gave it to her. So I don't really have like a picture of it, um, but it, yeah, I finished it and it, you know, it was a long excruciating journey. It took, you know, nine months and you know, like, uh, nine months for it to gestate and become, you know, a full-fledged giant shawl. And um, I'm very proud of it. It looks very beautiful. She liked it. Um, so I'm happy that I was able to give it to her. Um, but unfortunately, I don't have that finished object with me. So we will move right along. Um, again, the last time I talked to you guys, I threw out some sock ideas I wanted to do and wanted to work on and um, threw out some combinations of yarn because I'm trying just to like get through my stash, both like of, I'm looking because my stash is right here, both a yarn that has not been caked up yet and like yarn that I do have caked and like, you know, like one one ball of you know fingering weight yarn like or well to make one pair of socks with fingering weight yarn like it takes up like a little more than half of a ball so we're left with like not full balls of yarn but like just enough that like maybe if we pair it with another smaller ball of yarn then we get another pair of socks so i'm just trying to get through <laughs> the the yarn that i have right now um and you know whatever i have left over i roll into tiny little balls that like it, it isn't enough for heels toes and cuffs and it's not enough to make another and it's definitely not enough to make another pair of socks like just the foot in the leg and I roll it up into a little ball and put it in my little basket that has a lot of fingering weight yarn that I will eventually maybe crochet <laughs> into a, a granny stripe blanket. Um, I do have my giant bag uh, that holds the current state of the granny stripe blanket, which hasn't really changed since February. <laughs> and it stares at me menacingly and um says when are you gonna get to me and you know i sit there knitting i'm like i should be crocheting right now i feel like crocheting and then i pull out crocheting and then i get frustrated because i have to look at what i'm doing so i can't like knit and so i can't crochet and watch tv like i do with knitting i'm just not there yet and i know i need to just like crochet more and then i'd be able to do it and like come on caitlin it's granny stripe blanket it's easy like how can you like mess that up I've messed it up a couple of times. Uh, anyway, anyway, <laughs> I'm rambling. I'm sorry. Uh, these are the Stillwater Socks by Summer Lee Knits. Uh, another stash buster kind of a sock. Uh, very easy. Um, even with this little, um, uh, I was about to say crochet, this cable motif, like it's like a faux cable. Like it's not really a cable. Sorry if you can hear the the leaf blower in December. Like, it's December 9th and you're blowing leaves all over the place. Anyway, and this weather's been weird. We all know this. Um, so grass is still growing for some reason. I, I keep going off. <laughs> get it together. Caitlin, get it together. Talk about the freaking socks. Stillwater socks. This was fun. I liked the um, the texture that's on the front of the foot. The colorways that I used are, um, um, if you've been around for a while, you might remember this. Both colorways, probably. Uh, the orange colorway is um, Knit Picks 
squish fingering, I think, um, in the colorway Harvest, which is, you know, obviously this orange, like, dark pumpkin-y color. Uh, turmeric color, maybe, is a better way to describe it. Um, cinnamon, no, not cinnamon. Turmeric definitely is a better um, adjective. Um, and then the green is Pisces by Ritual Dyes. And uh, I'm not sure if their Pisces still looks like this or if they continue to dye Pisces. I haven't really checked their website, but I've had this yarn for like two months or two months, two years. And like, I still have some left over. <laughs> like, when is it gonna, when is it gonna end? Um, Pisces always sticking around. But yeah, I haven't worn them yet because I've been wanting to show them off. And I don't know if I wanna wear them or if I wanna like give them as a gift to someone. You know, people always ask me, like, oh, you're knitting? Like, are you knitting it as a gift? I'm like, no. Like, oh, are you knitting them to sell? No. And then they're like, so you're just knitting socks for yourself? Yes, of course I'm just knitting socks myself. I know my foot size. I'm allowed to knit things for myself. Like, oh, but you have a whole box of socks. I'm like, yeah, I want. I like variety. <laughs> It depends on the mood that I'm in. Like, maybe I'm in the mood to wear these socks. Maybe I'm, I'm in the mood to wear my, um, my shorty socks that I made with a uh, bellish or I want to make my, or I want to wear, I don't know. I like variety in my socks, even though like I'm the only one who normally sees them or sometimes I'll wear them out and be like, Ooh, are your socks homemade? Yes, they are. I don't know you knit. Yeah. Can you knit me some? No. <laughs> a little salty today. Um, but yeah, still water socks. Um, of course, I recommend the pattern. Very easy to follow. It's my first uh, summerly sock pattern that I followed. Um, everyone always talks her up and says how great of a pattern designer she is. And like, I've just never, um, like I've had her socks in my, uh, my favorites on Ravelry for a while, but I never like jump in and buy her pattern. But this time I did, I did two actually that I'm gonna show you. And um, yeah, I really like it. I would knit them again if someone wanted them specifically, like someone like, you know, yeah, I would knit them again. I don't really tend to knit socks a second time because there's so many sock patterns out there. And again, I like variety. I think the only socks that I've knit twice are the Hermione's Everyday Socks, but I have a pair and I gave a pair to someone else because uh, the Hermione's Everyday Socks were just easy. and I had done it before and I knew it would go quickly. Um, and it's, it was a free pattern too. Yeah, so who knows if I'll give them to as a gift to someone or if I'll just keep them for myself because they're uh, ugly. <laughs> um, some people like ugly socks, you know? Um, but yeah, those are the Stillwater socks. I will put links to all the patterns and the yarn that I've used in the description below. So be sure to check that out if you're interested in that. This sock pattern is a pair of 40 socks, another stash buster, and they are the Little Boxes socks by Summerlee Knits or Summerlee Designs. And I had fun with these. I thought they were cool to make. Um, I really just wanted another pair of shorty socks. And uh, gosh darn it, I got them. <laughs> um, these are, I'm really pleased with the color combination, though I'm not pleased that it ended up being mismatched. Um, the original, um, this was the original, and the, the lighter colorway was Ophelia by Stress Knits, um, and the lighter colorway was uh, Chestnut by Ritual Dyes, <laughs> and um, which I still, I still have more of this color, and I've used this in other pairs of socks, uh, this is the chestnut color. I've used it in a sweater. I've used it in at least two pairs of socks or three pairs of socks, and I still have it left over. I bought way too much originally. <laughs> but anyway, um, this was the original design that I was going for, but um, as we went on, I knew that I was not gonna have enough yarn in the Ophelia colorway to finish the sock. So I was like, well, I could maybe like, you know, just, you know, do the toes and the heel and the cuff in chestnut and then just keep the body of the sock, you know, the white 
Like, but I thought that would look weird. So like this was the other option. Let's do the inverse. And it's fine. <laughs> it works. Um, I've been wearing those, um, they're dupes. They're not the real ones, but I've been wearing the, uh, the Birkenstock, like Boston clogs. And those are like really great shoes to wear with, um, hand knit socks. And I wore these, um, with them and like no one really noticed because no one looks at my feet at work, <laughs> but I noticed and I liked how they looked with my outfit. I thought they were cute. Um, and I knit these socks while binge watching, um, or par partially I knit these socks while binge watching Better Call Saul. So I see these squares and I think of Better Call Saul. <laughs> um, and yeah, I'm pleased with how they turned out. They fit nice for the most part, even though I don't like this heel. I'm not a fan of the, um, I don't even remember, the like German short row heel. Um, I much prefer a uh, heel flap and gusset heel, um, but you know, that's what the pattern called for. And so I did what it told me to do and it was a forethought heel. Um, so like I would knit to about, you know, this point in the sock and then create the heel. But it, it was, it was easy to keep track for the next sock. Um, yeah, like when to create the heel and when to stop. But yeah, it's fine. Now that they're a little bit, um, what's the word? Uh, they got a little, they're a little pilly. They're a little, um, they're shedding a lot right now because I wore them in, in Birkenstocks. Um, but I like them. Um, despite their mismatchiness, if it were up to me, they would all look like this. And I go back and forth on which one I like the best. But I think right now this one's my favorite. Um, again, highly recommend this pattern. Um, another great stash buster. Uh, I got through all of Ophelia. Obviously, I still have the chestnut left over. Um, I might make another pair of these. Um, I do like the shorty socks. Um, I wear short socks more. I wear my short socks more than I wear my longer socks. So I'm always looking for good uh, short sock patterns. Um, so yeah, those are the little boxes socks. Alrighty, so this next pair of socks that I am working on, I only have one to show you right now, are the Homebody Socks by This Handmade Life. And here they are. They're very fluffy, very squishy, very thick socks because it's a fingering weight held double with uh, mohair. As you can see the halo on there. Um, I literally took direct inspiration from the um, the uh, the patterns photo, which is also this pink color. <laughs> I was gonna use a different mohair with this pink color and then I thought it looked really gross. So then I just went straight for the standard white mohair. It is again, a stash buster project. Um, I had bought this yarn when Phil and I went to the Finger Lakes back in May. And uh, the yarn is the Periwinkle Sheep, uh, which, uh, the, which was hand dyed in Albany, New York, and then the color is rose gold. Um, so it's mostly pink. I don't know if you can't really see it here, but then there's like flecks of like really light gold and yellow. So it's not like pink all the way. Um, it's a little bit more dynamic. And then I just have a standard white mohair from Knit Picks. Cause I have like a bunch. Um, yeah, I had a bunch from when I made this sweater. Um, so yeah, um, it's it's been fun to make. It's like a broken rib kind of pattern. It's very interesting heel construction. I forget what they call it. Let me. I just like did the heel flap on the second one. Um, have yet to do the gusset. They call this heel the shape strong heel. It's kind of cool. Uh, they these socks fit more like um, slippers than they do like actual socks. Um, I'm more of a 
I prefer a sock that's a bit more tight to my foot, uh, but this is definitely a lot more loose, um, and that's why I consider them more like uh, slipper socks, um, maybe socks for know, your family's cabin <laughs> or whatever. Um, but yeah, I mean, like it was fun to make. It was very, um, it was pretty. Um, I'm trying to say. It was good TV knitting, uh, obviously until you got to the heel, but like no sock is ever, you know, TV knitting. When you get to the heel, you have to pay special attention to it. Um, but no, super easy. And uh, I finished this sock when I was finishing watching Better Call Saul. And uh, so now I look at these, this broken rib and I think of Better Call Saul and how I haven't uh, fully recovered yet from finishing the show, even though I finished it two weeks ago and yet I'm still thinking about it um um it's like oh Jimmy <laughs> but um yeah I really like these I'm excited to finish these um my plan was to finish them over the weekend and then it didn't happen <laughs> so um these are these are pretty they're getting there this is I've been bringing these these are work socks and I'm on my lunch breaks or whatever it's just like a good thing to like turn your brain off to like after you eat your salad and you're just like okay time to knit time to like feel something <laughs> you get a little bit of um serotonin boost knitting anyway so that's the those are the home body socks all right so the next work in progress i've got going i have two more yeah after that one um I guess I'll just show you now. It is a sweater. Yay. Um, and I just joined the shoulders last night. So I had something um, easy to show you. And it is the window pane sweater by Daya Knitwear. Ooh. So it do it's not very window painey right now. <laughs> but it's getting there. So it's a cropped sweater or, you know, more cropped than regular sweaters. Um, it's a drop sleeve. Uh, there's some color work involved. So I had purchased this green yarn with the intention of making the uh, bay pullover by Jacqueline C. Slack. And then um, my gauge was completely off when I had gotten like halfway through it and then I decided that I didn't want to make it with this yarn anymore because um, I was getting very frustrated and I had like taken a break from it for a very long time uh, but I saw the Dia sweater um, on Ravelry or sorry it's not the Dia, Dia sweater <laughs> I saw the window pane sweater on my Ravelry um, that was because I was looking for another sweater to knit with this yarn because I have a sweater's quantity worth and I just happened to have the same amount of yarn that I needed. So I bought the pattern and I started working on it. And um, I've, you know, there's a theme with the box of socks and then like there's no boxes in it now because you add the vertical stripes um, after you knit the, the sweater, which I guess I'll talk about next episode where hopefully I have the sweater done. I want this to be my Christmas sweater. Um, but what was I going with that? I don't remember. Uh, the yarn. <laughs> over here. Uh, again, kind of a stash buster because I had had this in my stash since the winter. Oh, look. Oh, I remember when Phil tried to, oh, my husband, open the package for me and he used scissors and he sliced a tragedy. This is supposed to be like this but then he sliced it. Every knitter's worst nightmare. Um, but this is uh, Plenty by Pearl Soho, extra fine merino wool in the colorway Laurel Leaf. I think it's a really pretty, uh, cool colored green. I wear a lot of green, but my green is either like a sage green or it's like a warm green, you know? I like this like pine colored green. We'll put that back. And then the color or the contrasting color 
is uh, Ozetta's yarn, which I don't know if she continues to sell, but I bought this um, when I made one of her sweaters, which I don't remember the name, the season sweater. Um, and I still have a skein and a half of this left over, so I'm using it in the color work of this sweater. I figured it would be a cool, you know, a cool combination. I kind of like how it's looking. I'm liking the contrast, and I feel like it's going to be a good Christmas sweater or holiday sweater, and a sweater to wear, you know, after the holidays. I've kind of like this track that I've been going on with like making holiday sweaters, like how I made, you know, that red sweater based on uh, Only Murders in the Building, you know, last year, and I wore that like all Christmas season. Um, I'll probably wear it again. I will wear it again <laughs> but it's like I don't know when um, and I think I've made at least another one I guess this one technically is a holiday sweater because I wore it all holidays the year before but anyway um, <laughs> so yeah that's what I've been working on now uh, the next step is the collar um, there's options to make the collar either a crew neck a mock neck or like a full turtleneck and I think I'm just gonna do the crew neck um, I have to look back at the the pictures to decide if I want to do the crew neck or the mock neck. This pattern though made me realize that um, tubular cast-ons and bind-offs are worth it. Um, I really love how this tubular bind-off looks and like the original pattern doesn't call for the contrasting color along the um, what is this called? <laughs> Along the, uh, the the ribbing for the body. But I saw someone's Ravelry projects where they did this and I thought it was so cool. So I copied them. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm excited for this one. Um, I didn't want to like pick up stitches or anything because I like just finished this last night and I knew I was going to film today. So I was like, well, I'm not gonna like continue the next part when I have, you know, we're at the halfway point basically. Um, Cause then we got the sleeves and um, and then the, the vertical color work is done in a crochet. So like, pray for me, <laughs> see how that goes. But yeah, that's, I've been enjoying that project. It's been easy. It's made uh, the um, Plenty yarn and Ozetta's yarn is Aran slash worsted weight, so it goes very quickly. I like the bulkiness of it. I've really been enjoying bulky items of clothing, obviously. Like this hoodie is um, a size too big for me, but I do love a bulky sweater. Where was I going with that? Anyway. Um, yeah, so there's that. And I have two other projects that I'm working on. Two projects um, that, that's, that are long-term projects. Uh, the first being, I guess I'll show you. They're both kind of similar uh, in the vein that they're both related to hockey. Um, I kind of took the idea from Emily of, um, she, she's not 108 stitches anymore. She's, um, gently chaotic knits um, where she follows baseball very closely. She used to work for the Mariners, the Seattle Mariners, which is another tie-in, which I'll mention in a moment, um, where with every game, she well, she would make a pair of socks and there would be contrasting colors to the socks. And like, I think she made one, I can't remember if it was for the Mariners or it was for another team that she follows. But anyway, this is a tangent. Um, she like she would have one color for the games won and another color for the games lost so whatever you know game one they lost the first game so it was a red stripe game two they won so it was a yellow stripe the next two games they lost the next three games you know like and it just continued as the season went on and I was like well I want to do that for my you know little hockey team which is the Seattle Kraken which is a new team to the organization uh, last year they were very bad <laughs> they were one of the worst teams in the league uh, but this year we have hope apparently there's like a 98 percent chance of them getting into the playoffs so we'll see what happens with these these boys but 
So I've been doing that, but instead of with a pair of socks, I'm making a cowl and it looks small <laughs> because it's kind of, it's a tighter cowl. I didn't, oops, sorry. It's a tighter cowl. I didn't want something like loose. I wanted something tight close to my neck. Um, and this is what um, the first, how many games are they in? How many weeks? This is the first eight weeks of games. Um, and I just, yeah. So I, so these are like the Kraken's colors. Um, very cool, literally very cool colors. Um, the uh, the ribbing is just is is it's all like it's not stash. It's kind of stash busting. Uh, I guess I'll talk a little bit. For my birthday a couple years ago, Phil had bought me a bunch of. Oh my! Oh my! You just bounded in here crying. What is it? <laughs> You hear people outside? Go see them. Go. I'm not doing anything about it. I can't do anything about it. I know. Hey, you know what? If you stop crying, I can finish this and then I'll come down and feed you. Go say nay. these dogs. Um, what was I saying? Uh, this is also kind of a stash buster project. Um, the blue Phil had got a couple of birthdays ago. He bought me a bunch of knit picks yarn. Um, it was a bunch of like blue colored yarns and they all happened to be, you know, he didn't pick the, the colors because of that. Um, but they all happened to be like the Seattle Kraken colors. Um, so I don't remember the names of the colors. <laughs> um, but uh, like this, this light blue is knit picks. The red is knit picks. Uh, the kind of aqua color is knit picks, and then the blue is a um, Regia yarn, I believe, that I had bought to knit socks for my family a long time ago, and I still have this blue left over. And I picked this blue to be like the losing games because I had hope. <laughs> Uh, because I have this much left. Ugh, this game's like falling apart. I'm like, and I had bought, I had bought extras of the, the winning color. So I was like, you know, don't fail me because I don't want to go looking for this color um, somewhere like on eBay or Ravelry or whatever. Uh, but Kraken's doing pretty good. Um, you know, they've had a couple winning streaks. And uh, over the weekend, they did lose another game, um, but they're doing good. They're doing good. I'm proud of them. <laughs> but yeah, my, my hope is that because Phil and I are planning to go to uh, go back to the Pacific Northwest next year and kind of experience the PNW like for real this time, because we went during 2020 when we thought the um, virus was on a downtick like in August and then it revved right back up um, but like everything was closed we could really only do like outdoorsy things which was fine because it just happened to be the time of the year where it was just gorgeous um, but we wanted to experience it you know again and I really liked it out there and the hope is to go to a cracking game and then I can wear my cowl to one of the games um, so that's what's going on with this project. I'm just keeping up with it, you know, as each game goes by. And that's in my little ghost bag because one of the players named Brandon Tanev, like, if you see his, like, maybe I'll put it up on the screen maybe, but if you look him up, um, his, like, picture for the conference, um, it's, it's like his eyes are very wide. And um, the social media team like always puts like an emoji of a ghost next to him, and he's one of my favorite players um, because of that. Um, so I have the little ghost bag uh, as comm commemoration for Turbo uh, Brandon Tanev. Um, and then the next project, that is again a long-standing project, is um, also related to hockey. Phil and I are in a fantasy hockey league, 
and I am keeping track of my wins and losses in that league in a pair of socks. Um, so this is a very interesting color combination that I picked. Um, at the time I thought it looked nice, but now I'm not so sure. <laughs> uh, these will just be, you know, at home socks. Um, it's kind of like a broken rib kind of situation with this. Um, again, another Stash Buster. All of my projects are Stash Busters at this point, um, unless I say otherwise. Um, I don't remember the color of this one. It was of this light, this like light bluish gray. Um, I've had it. It's literally a ball. Like I don't, <laughs> I don't know where it is, but um, I don't have a label for it. Um, the uh, the pink, which are the colors that represent the week that I win in the hockey league. It's a knitting Nakabi, knitting Nakabi colorway um, from her um, advent calendar last year. And this colorway, I believe, I believe is You Have No Power Over Me. It was a labyrinth themed advent calendar. Um, I have to look back on my last video because I think I corrected myself in it. But Yes, but I don't believe she sells this color anymore, uh, but it is very pretty and she does uh, dye colors that are similar to this. So keep enough. So give Kelsey a follow and keep an eye on her, what she's releasing. Um, and then the green is a Knit Picks color. Um, and I can't remember. Oh, Rosemary is its color. Um, just a fingering Knit Picks sock yarn. Um, I'm, I'm literally four and four, <laughs> like so far. At this point, I think I had made, because we're eight weeks in, I think at this point I'm going to turn the heel and um, then start working on the foot. So I think, I don't know if I want to keep going a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, so I'm knitting two at a time um, just so I can keep track <laughs> and it's really annoying knitting two at a time I don't like it um, but I only have to do it once a week so it's not too bad so I'll put this in my little bag and those are all my works in progress um, yeah and I have one more thing to discuss uh, I am participating in a yarn advent calendar I did purchase um, Kelsey's, uh, it's not a yarn advent, she's not calling it an advent calendar and it's not really because Kelsey's is a, the seven days between Christmas and New Year's, um, I can't remember what she's calling it, but it's uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory themed, so I'm excited for that. Um, and I think like they're, they're 50 gram skeins instead of 20 grams, so you get a little bit more. But this year I'm going to do the advent calendar, um, the only crafters in the building, which is um, focused on only murders in the building. If you haven't watched that show yet, what are you doing? You need to stop what you're doing right now and watch <laughs> the show. It is um, adorable. It's on Hulu. It's really worth uh, purchasing a Hulu subscription for. It's it's just it's fantastic. Um, but this is a collaboration with Earl Grey Fiber Co. and Archaic Yarns. And um, yeah, I'm really liking it so far. Um, so I'm going to give you the, show you the first 10 colors. Um, I have the nine opened already and I'll open the 10th. So I believe, got to make sure I'm doing this in the right order. So the first one is from Archaic fibers and this is the who is tim kono it's very pretty i love this plum colorway got that one um then we got just gotta make sure i choose oh this is one um the emerald ring and this is the earl gray's color very gorgeous kelly green emerald green if you will <laughs> I'm gonna put it back in this bag. Then we have, I think it was this one. Yep, My Hardy Boys. I love this color blue. I've been, I wanna knit a sweater in like this kind of blue color. Maybe one day, 
we'll see. Um, I think flipping the pieces was next. Pink with some blue sparkle, or not sparkles, speckles. Uh, all is not okay in Oklahoma. Some little brown. Uh, glitter guy. Which I'm like pleased that they like dyed colors because like this, um, this announcement came out before this for this uh, advent calendar uh, before the second season of the show came out. And I'm glad that they're incorporating second season elements into it. Um, then we have tie dye guy. Pretty. Um, <laughs> Rockstar Sting is a dog poisoning murderer, <laughs> which doesn't make any sense unless you watch the show. <laughs> Uh, kind of a fun color and then we have Rose Cooper and then for today the 10th I figured I would open this one and they have such like I love their packaging with um, you know D uh, Dina's sorry not Dina's yeah with uh, Dina's gourmet deli kind of looks like little uh, hoagies Ooh. Uh, <laughs> hips before dips. Cute. I like this color. All right, so that's what we got so far in the advent calendar. A little less than halfway through. I have no idea what I'm going to do with these. Um, I'll figure it out. But I'm liking them so far. And I'm really enjoying their theme. They're doing a really great job at it. Thank you so much for tuning in today, taking a gander of what I've been working on uh, as of late. I um, hope I've kind of rediscovered my love for knitting. I've been able to make more time to knit um, and not so much time reading. Um, I'm looking over here because my, my yarn's over here, my books are over here because um, I've purchased so many books and it's like I'm doing so much reading now and then I buy all these books and then I get into knitting again. So I'm, I feel like it's going to be a back and forth <laughs> thing going on here. Um, so I'm back into the knitting, uh, the knitting gritty, if you will. Um, yeah, I don't know why I'm still looking over here. But yeah, I've been knitting a lot more, obviously. Um, I, I think these, uh, the like, uh, the hockey projects really got me back into it. Um, because it was something that I do sometimes, like, you know, for some things it's every other day, like with the cowl or it's once a week, like with the socks. Um, and then I was like, well, I want to make a sweater for Christmas. And then like, obviously these other socks that I showed you. Yeah. So I've been pretty busy over the past month now that I like take a look. Yeah, it's pretty decent. Um, so yeah, maybe I'll have more time to knit as the uh, the year comes to a close um, maybe you'll see me again <laughs> um, before the year is ended I appreciate all you guys who stick around and continue to watch um, even though like I, um, I I ghosted you after saying like I'm gonna get back into this I promise and then I was like see ya um, life gets crazy as we all know um, but I still found time to knit. But before I close this out, I just wanted to remind you to um, go ahead and check out Anna Luisa. Remember, you get 20% off your purchase of uh, any Anna Luisa item. Uh, it's They're a great company. I've been supporting them even before they've offered to partner with me. Um, and I'm always wearing their stuff, like I'm wearing their earrings right now. Um, and they're perfect last minute um, gift ideas. Um, so go ahead and check them out. Again, use my code for 20% off and that information is down below. And yeah, so we'll leave it right here. Um, uh, stay safe, everyone. Keep knitting. Enjoy the holiday season. And I will see you all later.